Now, one of the problems with all these methods, the three methods I've discussed so far is the following. Let's say that you're given four points and I fit a curve, right? So uh, four points, N equals three polynomial. So what you'll do is you set up an equation with four constants and you'll fit a curve. Now what does happen sometimes is uh, maybe you said, and this was an experiment you ran, and you figured out that the test conditions for uh, these were not right, and this point changed. It, it moved over here because maybe the, the experiment was incorrect at that particular point. Or you know you might you might just want to uh, uh, see the effect of a change in a, a parameter. So what happens in this case is that you need to restart all the way from scratch, uh, take that new point, fit a curve. So it'll probably go like this, right? So you need to do the oh, the whole process all to all all over again. What? So this is with the polynomial. So this is what a spline fit would do. It'll actually take these two points, the first two points, fit a fit a curve, exactly a third order polynomial, and then it'll also fit a curve here, again a third order polynomial. But in order to ensure that there is some continuity at this point. It'll, it'll use some, some information about its derivative. So for example, if the derivative at this point is continuous, and if the second derivative is continuous, and maybe the third derivative, depending on the polynomial, then you can ensure that it'll look like a smooth curve, but it won't look like it has a discontinuity. That is, you identified a different polynomial for different sections. So it basically fits a third order polynomial between two points, okay, always a third order polynomial, and it ensures that there's some continuity between the two uh, point, to the place where those uh, polynomials join. These are actually known as knot points. And the advantage of this particular approach is that if you now change one point, let's say this one moves up, you really don't need to recompute uh, this part of the trajectory or anything which is which is some knot points away. You only have to do a local fit for for this, this point. So it'll, it'll affect only the polynomial which is joining those two points. It will not affect the remaining part. So uh, a piecewise polynomial, as it is called, fits a piecewise polynomial to individual knot points. Okay, so if you change one point, you don't have to do the whole calculation all over again. I should use a different color for this. Let's use orange. This will be unchanged. New curve. Okay, so let's see how to use a spline, a spline is basically, a, in this case, a third order polynomial, which will do the job. This is a piecewise spline. Okay, so we're given data points, let's say x0, f of x0, x1, f of x1, and so on till xn, f of xn. So n plus one data points. Okay, so here's how we proceed.
So we'll assume a third order polynomial passes through points xi and xi plus one. These are neighboring points and you assume a third order polynomial passes through them, always a third order cubic polynomial. Okay, so what will that form look like? It will be f of x equals, um, see, I'm gonna use a notation which would help me to generalize this. So let's say that we'll always use this, ai zero plus ai one x plus eight, Okay, now this is how you would assume a polynomial, but, uh, and you could do it this way. Okay, this is perfectly fine. Now I'm gonna just stick to a convention we used by the, uh, there's a function called spline in Octave MATLAB, which you use. It actually uses slightly different form from this. So there's a function called spline which actually assumes a different form, ai zero plus ai one, x minus xi plus ai two, x minus xi square plus, continuing ai three, x minus xi cube. So all it does is it basically subtracts out uh, the, the grid point i. Okay, so this is the form which spline uses and I think sticking to this is good because you know, once you get some results from the function spline, which we'll be using because there's too much bookkeeping in this case, we'll just see that the constants we'll get from that will be very different from if we get, if we, if we start assuming this form. So we'll not stick to that, we'll use uh, this form. And subtracting a constant doesn't change anything. In fact, there's an advantage of using this form because once you have you know that it should satisfy the formula for f of i, xi should be one of the points. When you put x equals xi, you'll see that it actually gives you the first constant without having to do any work. Okay, so with this form, let's proceed. We can fit this in one line. Okay, so what we see here is that we have uh, an equation for one of those segments between xi and xi plus one, right? Between these two points. To visualize, just imagine there's two points. Let me just write it here. And we have like a cubic polynomial, third order polynomial with this form. Okay, now this is a form which I can write for the next point too. So I'll write it as f of i, sorry, let me just stick, stick with one, it's easier. Okay. So this is the form for these two points, x i, x i plus one. Now we have four constants here, which we need to identify. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so we need four conditions to identify those four constants. So this is how you'll get the conditions. First of all, we know that this equation, this uh, curve passes through xi. So f of xi is, well, it's going to be, if you put x equals xi, you'll get ai zero plus Everything else is zero, right? That's the advantage of this form. So this is something which is given to us, right? Remember, if you go back here, uh, we were given some data about the points. So we know the value at those not points. 
So we know the value at this point. So that's basically going to be one, uh, AI zero. We also know that it passes through XI plus one. So we have FI XI plus one equals AI zero plus AI one XI plus one minus XI plus AI two xi plus 1 minus xi square plus continuing it on new line ai3 xi plus 1 minus xi cube okay and the thing over here uh, just like this is known, this is also known because we know the value at the not points. Okay, so we got two constants, but we need to generate more uh, more conditions, otherwise we can't possibly fit this because we want to eventually end up with, if there are n unknowns, we need n equations. So let's work on this. We also want to ensure that when you have another point, let's say over here, so then if you connect, So remember, this is one segment. With coordinate x i plus one. This is x i plus two. Okay, here we are going to write an equation for f x i. F i, sorry, F i x. Here we'll have an equation which will be F i plus one x. Right, each of these F i's are going to be uh, a, a, a cubic polynomial. Okay, so now what we'll do is to get the remaining two conditions, we'll ensure that at this point, uh, let's say this point, we want to ensure that the first derivative is continuous. So we have f of i x coming from the left side, f i plus one coming from the right side. When they connect, we want to ensure that the derivative is continuous. So that equation would be simply f i prime x at x equals x i plus one equals f prime i plus one x i plus one. Right, the first derivative is continuous. So that will ensure that the joint is more or less not just connected, but it's smooth. We also will ensure that the second derivative at that point is continuous. So second derivative is two dashes. Okay, so, but then there's also going to be another segment on the left side like this. And then we want to basically join that point also something like this. And so this, let's just call that F I minus one X, and this is X I minus one. Okay, so we saw continuity here, but we also want continuity over here. So that condition is going to be a similar condition as the one I wrote here, but with, uh, instead of i plus one, I'll put i minus one. So f i prime, oh, I did a, there's an error here. This should be, oh, this, uh, this is, this is fine. Yeah, sorry. So let's, let's do this condition, x i, so f i x i equals, f i minus one x i and the same for the second derivative. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is just something I wrote down for 
two intermediate points. Like I just took two points in between and I wrote this condition. But in order to understand this as a whole, we need to look at all the n plus one not points. So what I'm going to try to do is, for n plus one not point, I'm going to ask the question, how many constants are there and how many um, equations can I generate? I need to generate equal, the same number of equations as there are a number of constants, so I can solve for the constants. So this is just giving you an idea of how I went about writing this. Now I'm going to generalize this to all the n plus one not the n not points, the n, n, plus, n plus one not points, my bad. Now n plus one not points is what I have. So now we will compute. Constants and equations for n plus one. not point. So, one, two, so on, sorry, starts from zero, my bad, zero, one, two, till n. Okay, so for n not point, n plus one not points, clear that I'll have one line, two, third cubic polynomial, so on, till n, right? So you see this is one, this is one, two, two. So n would be n. So clearly we have n plus one cubic polynomials. But each cubic polynomial has four constants. Constants per So we have four times n plus one constants. So we have four n plus one constants. Okay, so I better generate four times n plus one equations. Is that right? Yeah, four. No, there are, my bad, just, there are n polynomials, right? Last one is n, so it should be four n, my bad. So four n constants, so we need four n uh, equations. Okay, so let's see how to generate four n equations. So we're gonna use um, some of the things which which happened here in order to generate those equations. Okay, let's, let's start uh, figuring that out for n plus one, not points. Okay, so what we have is for each of these points all the way to here. So the intermediate or the, the middle uh, not points, we'll have two conditions on each of them, right? So what is that condition is that when you take a segment here and we take a segment here, uh, this segment will pass through this point and this segment will pass through the same point. So there'll be two conditions. We, we are given a value at this point, whatever that satisfies should have So there were two N, two N uh, conditions on intermediate points. Is that right, 2n, doesn't look right, one. So that's one, two, should be n minus one, I think. Right, because if there are two n points, so there are n plus one points, uh, we are skipping, we are removing two from them. We, we don't want this point and we don't want this point, so it'll be minus two, so it'll be n minus one, so it should be n minus one, right? Because we remove two from them. Okay, two n minus one conditions for that. We also have the condition that at this point, 
the first derivative at one and the first derivative at two should be equal. So if you take the equation for this line, take the first derivative, evaluate it at here, should be the same as the first derivative for this line, evaluate at the same point. So you have one condition for that point, second condition for this point, and you'll end up with n minus one conditions. So n minus one f dash condition. But there's also a second derivative condition, that is the second derivative of this point should also be uh, continuous. So n minus one f dash condition. Okay, now I forgot one thing here though. Uh, just because these are last two points doesn't mean that they do not satisfy the equation of this particular uh, cubic polynomial at this point. I did not include that. So similarly, this line here should satisfy the value at the end point. So there'll be just two conditions at end points. Okay, I don't think we have more than that. Let's see if we have covered everything. We had the values which we've covered. We had the first derivative which we've covered and second derivative. So it all looks good. So if you sum this up, Okay, so 2n minus 1 plus n minus 1 plus n minus 1 plus 2, you get 4n minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 plus 2, 4n minus 4. Hold on, let me do it again. 2n minus 2 plus n minus one plus n minus one plus two. Okay, so this, this, this cancels. So my bad, it's four n minus two. Okay, so what we've got is this. We have four n constants, but four n minus two equations. We still cannot determine two constants because we're missing two equations. It's always a problem with spline. You can never get all the constants because we are too short, two equations short. But it's just equations. We can create whatever equation we want. So these two extra equations is something which you can specify. Uh, there are multiple ways of specifying those two conditions. So let me write this down first. We have O N constants, but only O n minus two equations. We need to specify two more conditions or two more equations in order to fit the spline. Okay, so based that those two conditions, just two conditions, there are various ways in which people specify that. Number one, uh, here, here are different ways to specify two conditions. Number one, option is called natural splines. In this case, what they do is they specify that the second derivative at the first point is equal to zero and the second derivative at the nth point is zero. So that's the condition for natural spline. So those two conditions generate two equations which can be used. The second one, uh, by the way, this condition is not implemented in, in the spline function. Okay, it's not there. Uh, there's something called clamped condition, which will do this f prime x zero equals zero and 
f double prime x n sorry f prime x n is zero, which means that the first derivative at the endpoints is zero. So this one is actually implemented in spline. Okay, in spline you can specify this the spline function in octave. There's another one which is the default one. It's called not a not. Okay, which specifies that the recollect this. This is the third derivative at x one equals for segment one equals the third derivative for segment two, and then third derivative at segment uh, n minus one. Uh, so it's for x n minus one, but then it should be for a uh, curve n n minus one. Okay, so what this is saying is that when you have these points, keep going, keep going, last point. You take the second point and the last point and ensure that the third derivative is continuous. It's kind of weird, right? Third derivative at the second point and the third derivative at the second to last point is continuous. It's called a not a not. Uh, I have no idea why it's not called a not to not, not a not. I think one hunch is that if you take the third derivative of uh, a cubic polynomial, you end up with a constant. So effectively, it's like the information about a not point is lost. Right, so if you take the third derivative of, so if you take the third derivative of this function, uh, you'll see all these will become zero because they all go up to square. When you take the third derivative of this, you'll get a constant, right? Third derivative of a, a third order polynomial is a constant. And when you have a constant, you lose the information that's a not point. I guess that might be a reason why it's called not a not. But this one is the default one implemented in spline. Okay, now uh, this is actually quite a bit of work to try to get these constants by hand. So I'm not even going to try to do that here. It's possible to do this by hand. That is find these, uh, put this 4n plus n minus uh, 4n equations, 4n constants, but I, I would rather not do it by hand. I would just use the spline toolbox. So let's just use the, the spline function to do this with some data points and we'll see how to implement uh, the ones which are given, which is spline and default spline, I don't have, uh, we, we do, can't do the natural spline because it's not implemented. So here is how to do it. If you go to just search for spline uh, octave, you can see how to use it. There are two ways to use it. If you want to just find that equation with coefficients, then you do spline x comma y, that's x, y is the data, and pp will give you that polynomial, which we said that with the constants. If you use spline x comma y, x i, it actually doesn't give you the coefficient, it basically gives you uh, the interpolant. So if you have an x i, which whose value you need to find using the spline, it'll actually give you the data point. So let's see how to use this. Um, there is, let's write, write some code. Okay, I'm gonna use, the following uh, data, x equals one, two, three, four. It doesn't have to be equispaced, by the way. Three, six, three, six, five, eight. Okay, um, the small data set. This is, by the way, same as f of x. Save this. Uh, 
So hold it. Let's call that main spline dot n. Okay. Okay, so we have that data. Let's just plot the data first. X comma y with red x. Okay, so just some points. We need to make a spline to pass through this. So here's what we'll do. Uh, Here's one way to use it. Let's say that I want this to look how the data will look from one to four. So I can do lin space zero, uh, one through four. That is basically this one and this four. And when I don't specify third, I would take 100 points. So you could specify whatever you want. So it's 100 by default. Y fit would be spline. You get the, sorry, spline, spline x comma y, that's the data here. And then you want to figure out what are the values for y fit for all these x fit values. So this will give me x fit y fit, which I can then plot x fit y fit. And let me draw it with a uh, black line. So you'll see how it looks on the red crosses. Uh, and then what will happen is if you try to make run this, uh, it will print this plot, but then it will erase that and plot the new one. So you will not see both data points unless you do hold on. So let's run this. Okay, so crosses, black line, which is the fit, and you can see it nicely passes. Something to note is that at the endpoints, you can so you can see that first of all, at the midpoints, this point and this point, the derivative looks smooth, right? The first derivative, second derivative looks smooth. It doesn't look, there's a kink there. By kink, I mean there's no sharp corners there, right? So it's smooth. Here you can see the first derivative is not zero. What is the first derivative? It's basically uh, the rate of change of the slope. It's the slope. So the slope here is something like, I don't know, maybe 60 degrees. If you can think of a line which passes through this and over here and then same here. If you wanted to make that derivative to be zero, that is the clamped condition. So this is actually what you would call the uh, not a not condition. Okay, which ensures that the third derivative is constant. If you want to do it with the clamp condition, this is what you'll do. Zero, y, zero. So I specify an additional two points, zero and zero. That is just to make the derivative go to zero at the end point, x fit. And now let's place again. You can see here, it actually curves a little bit, it makes a slope zero, same here. Now this is sometimes desired. You don't want to suddenly, if you're making a design of, I don't know, if you're like, if you're a mechanical engineer, design engineer, and you're trying to make the shape of a car to be a spline, you really don't want the edges to be like sharp, right? You want it to be smooth out. So you can maybe, maybe over here, if you want it to be smooth, you want the slope to be zero so that if it's flat, then maybe you can screw in uh, I don't know, the bonnet of a car or whatever you want to design. So that's why you want to have the clamped condition. So it's smooth there. Uh, so that's the clamped condition. Now, if you do want to see what the polynomials look like, so we we basically did some theory and figured out what are the coefficients and so on. We did the counting and so on. If you want to see that, what you could do is this. You could do PP val, sorry, PP, which is what we saw here, PP equals spline x, y. That was a sin spline x comma y. And let's just print that. Now this will give you an error because the plot is, okay. Okay, so it ran this, uh, it actually outputted PP. Now PP has, oh my God, it got this. It's Okay, this is what I wanted. So it has uh, the following structure. So PP is actually a structure. It'll have different uh, things tied to it. So there's something else missing here, actually. Let me run this again. Okay, this is what I'm missing. 
So form is PP breaks. So this is basically saying that there are breaks at X equals one, two, three, and four. So if there are, so N here is three, right? Because there are N plus one points, four points. So if there are three breaks, so it'll be, you'll need three equations, three cubic polynomials. So each of those polynomials will have four constants. This is the constants for the first polynomial, another the constant for the second polynomial, and then the third one. Okay, so there'll be, since there are four uh, constants in the three conditions, uh, three break, three uh, polynomials, and there are four constants, there'll be 12 unknowns. These are the 12 unknowns, and they're solved for. Pieces are three, order is four, and dimension is one. If you want to use uh, PP to make the plot, what you would do is you just go and say, uh, it's something called PP val, it might be in the documentation here. PP val, if you search for PP val octave. <clears throat> so given PP and the, the point over which you want to do interpolation, then it will actually give you the data. So this is exact, exactly like the spline function uh, without using the PP well, right? So if you go here and say, uh, y fit equals spline, sorry, PP val, PP uh, x fit, it should do the same job as before. So run this. So it gives the same equation. So it's another way of doing the same thing. If you want the clamped condition, then all you need to do is put zero, y, zero. So you got the clamped condition. Okay, and then you can uh, in, uh, look further over this. Okay, so the spline I think is a very, very important curve fitting method. Uh, mechanical engineers use it a lot in design. Um, if you want aerodynamic shape, uh, you probably want to use uh, some kind of a piecewise polynomial, could be Bezier, could be spline. Uh, very common, when you do, uh, when you use some of these drafting tools, you put points, it actually uses a spline to smoothen things 